ICT NCERT presents audio book introductory macroeconomics page 66 module 4.2 income determination in a three sector economy rationale in a three sector economy there is a flow of goods and services between firms households and government the government increases aggregate demand by spending on goods and services and it raises revenue through taxes key concepts taxes subsidies transfers fiscal policy equilibrium income 4.2.1 circular flow of income in a three sector economy in a three sector economy the government raises revenues through taxes and spends it either by making payments on purchases or subsidies to firms or by making transfer payments and other factor payments to the households figure 4.7 circular flow of income in a three sector economy this is a flow chart representing the three sectors of the economy that is the government sector households and firms the directional arrows represent who contributes what to whom firms as indicated contribute factor payments to households both firms and households contribute taxes to the government sector these have been represented by solid arrow lines the dotted arrow lines indicate what the government sector contributes to households and households to firms households contribute consumption expenditure to firms and the government sector provides to firms payments for government purchases and subsidies the government sector contributes to firms payments for government purchases and subsidies as illustrated in figure 4.7 the government sector receives taxes from firms and households in return it makes expenditure by making payments to firms in the form of purchases and subsidies it also spends by making payments to households in the form of factor services and transfer payments the government raises taxes or t and makes expenditures or g income is denoted by y consumption by c and savings by s since taxes are compulsory households now have y minus t available to them as disposable income or yd it is that part of income which they can choose to consume or save consumption is now a function of the disposable income this can be written as c is equal to c bar plus small b multiplied by yd here c bar is the autonomous consumption and small b is the mpc if they consume c and save s then we can show this as y minus t is equal to c plus s or y is equal to c plus s plus t page 67 aggregate demand equals what households spend on consumption or c what firms spend on investment or i and what the government spends on households and firms or g hence ad is equal to c plus i plus g this is the basic structure which demonstrates the flow of resources between an individual firm and the government 4.2.2 diagrammatic representation of aggregate demand ad in a three sector economy ad equals c plus i plus g we add the consumption investment and government expenditure curves to arrive at the ad curve this is represented in figure 4.8 figure 4.8 graphical representation of ad in a three sector economy here we have a graph the x axis represents income the y axis represents c or consumption i or investment g or government expenditure and ad or aggregate demand in this graph we can see a parallel line to x axis represented by g this shows 
that government expenditure remains same regardless of what the income is. Then we have another parallel line I which is parallel to the X axis. This also shows that investment remains same regardless of the income. There is an upward sloping line from C bar to C. This line has a slope is equal to small b. There is another line from I plus C bar plus G to AD is equal to C plus I plus G. This is parallel to the previous line and has the slope is equal to small b. Like the two sector model, equilibrium in the three sector model also requires that Y equals AD. Y equals C plus S plus T is equal to AD is equal to C plus I plus G or S plus T equals I plus G. Equilibrium requires that planned savings plus taxes should be equal to the planned investment plus government expenditure. Page 68 If AD is greater than Y, then firms will find that they are drawing inventories down below the level at which they wish to hold them and their investment plans are being unfulfilled. They will expand production in the next round, hiring more factors of production and increasing factor incomes. Households may have to pay more taxes out of these increased incomes. So, the increase in disposable income is less than the increase in the total income. Households increase consumption out of their increased disposable income. Since small b is less than 1, the increase in consumption will be less than the increase in disposable income. Aggregate demand rises further. More tax revenues also mean that the government can spend more. So, G may also rise. Hence, aggregate demand will continue to rise until the equality AD equals Y is achieved. Numerical example 1. Taking consumption function as C equals 100 plus 0 0.8 into YD and the investment is of rupees 40, the government is levying a tax of rupees 20 and is making an expenditure of rupees 16. I equals 40. T equals 20. G equals 16. C equals 100 plus 0 0.8 YD. AD equals open bracket 100 plus 0 0.8 YD close bracket plus 40 plus 16 is equal to 156 plus 0 0.8 YD. Table 4.5 calculates within brackets S plus T and within brackets I plus G for a different value of YD. Notice that within brackets S plus T equals within brackets I plus G at an income of rupees 700 and this is the equilibrium income. Table 4.5 Income Determination in the Presence of Government This table has 8 columns and 7 rows. Column 1 represents Y. Column 2 represents YD equals Y minus T. Column 3 represents C. Column 4 represents S. Column 5 represents S plus T. Column 6 represents I plus G. Column 7 represents Y equals C plus S plus T. And the last column, 8th column, represents AD equals C plus I plus G. Let us now look at the values row wise. Row 1 Y 400 leads to a YD of 380. The C is 404 and the S minus 24. S plus T is minus 4, I plus G 56. The Y becomes 400 and AD is 460. Row 2 Y equals 500. Then YD is 480. C 484. S is minus 4. S plus T equals 16. I plus G equals 56. The Y is 500 and the AD is 540. Row 3. 
y equals 600, then yd is 580, c equals 564 and s is 16, s plus t equals 36, i plus g equals 56, y is 600 and ad 620. Row 4, which is also the equilibrium, y equals 700, yd is 680, c equals 644, s is 36, s plus t equals 56, i plus g equals 56, y is 700 and ad 700. Row 5, y equals 800, yd is 780, c equals 724, S is 56, S plus T equals 76, I plus G equals 56, Y equals 800, AD is 780. Row 6, Y equals 900, YD 880, C equals 804, S is 76, S plus T equals 96, I plus G equals 56, Y is 900, AD 860. The last row, y is equal to 1000, yd is 980, c equals 884, s is 96, s plus t equals 116, i plus g equals 56, y is 1000 and ad is 940. As in the two-sector model, the decision to save is made by the households and the decision to invest is made by the firms. The difference in this case is made by the activities of the government. If planned savings are different from planned investment, the government can intervene by adjusting T and G such that equilibrium is achieved. What is more, the government can choose T and G such that the desired level of equilibrium is achieved. The set of policies in which the government chooses T, that is how much to tax and what to tax and G, that is how much to spend and how to spend, constitutes the government's fiscal policy. Page 69 4.2.3 Equilibrium Income in Three-Sector Economy A Graphical Representation Figure 4.9 graphically represents the equilibrium income in a three-sector economy. We have placed the income on the x-axis and aggregate demand on the y-axis. Remember that along a 45-degree line through the origin, the value on the x-coordinate is equal to the value on the y-coordinate. Thus, equilibrium will always lie on this line. Given any AD curve, the equilibrium will be where the 45-degree line intersects the AD curve. Y0 is the equilibrium income, which is equal to AD0, that is, aggregate demand at equilibrium level. At a level of income less than Y0, for example Y1, the aggregate demand or AD is greater than income Y. Planned savings plus taxes are less than planned investment plus government expenditure, so income will tend to rise. Thus, it is not an equilibrium condition. At a level of income Y2, which is greater than Y0, aggregate demand is less than income. Why? Planned savings plus taxes are more than planned investments plus government expenditure and hence income will tend to fall. This is not an equilibrium condition either. Figure 4.9 Graphical representation of income in three-sector economy Here we have a graph with two axes. The x-axis represents income or y. The y-axis represents aggregate demand or AD. The x-axis has been divided into three parts, y1, y0 and y2. The y-axis has also been divided into three parts, AD1, AD0 and AD2. There is a line labelled y is equal to AD which is at an angle of 45 degrees from the x-axis. There is another line which is upward sloping and it begins from the y-axis and intersects the line y is equal to ad at the point e. This line 
is AD is equal to C plus I plus G and the point E is the point of equilibrium. 4.2.4 Fiscal Policy and Full Employment Income As we know, the government can influence the level of income by changing G and T. If the income is too low, then government needs to increase expenditure. However, to fund increased expenditure, the government may need to increase taxes as well. Some of the positive impact of increasing G may then be eroded away because of an increase in T. If the MPC is known, then the government can change G and T in a manner so as to get the best possible outcome for the economy. Page 70 The set of policies by which the government changes its expenditure and taxes in order to influence the level of income is called its fiscal policy. When the government increases its expenditure or reduces taxes, this tends to increase income. This is called expansionary fiscal policy. If, on the other hand, the government feels that the aggregate demand is rising too fast and the economy is being unable to supply enough goods and services to meet this demand, then the government may actually cut back its expenditure and increase taxes. This is called contractionary fiscal policy. This discussion is summarized in Table 4.6. Table 4.6 Nature of Fiscal Policy This table has three columns and two rows. The first column indicates nature of fiscal policy. The second column indicates change in G. The third column indicates change in T. Row 1. Expansionary Fiscal Policy G increases. T decreases. Row 2. Contractionary Fiscal Policy G decreases, T increases 4.2.5 Income and Employment The number of people employed at any level of income is determined by the technology being used in the economy. How many people are employed, therefore, depends directly on how much quantity of goods is being produced. When everyone who wants to work at the going wage rate is employed, then the economy is set to enjoy full employment level. The corresponding income is called the full employment income. What happens if income is less than this level? Clearly, less output is being produced and fewer people are being employed now. In other words, some of the people who wish to work at the going wage rate find themselves without work. They are said to be involuntarily unemployed. They would like to work, but they are unable to find employment. Why would the income be below the full employment level? Our concept of equilibrium only requires that planned savings should get equal to planned investments. Equilibrium does not ensure full employment. If consumers consume, too little aggregate demand will be insufficient to support full employment output, even though the savings plan of households matches the investment plan of firms. Deliberate action will then be required to increase the aggregate demand so that the economy moves to full employment income level. The government's fiscal policy can play an important role in achieving this condition. The government can increase expenditure G and thus boost aggregate demand. Or the government can reduce taxes or T. This will increase disposable income and in turn boost the household consumption. In practice, the government is likely to use some combination of these measures. Test your understanding. 1. Distinguish between revenue deficit and fiscal deficit. Page 71. 2. India's fiscal deficit is currently approximately 5% of GDP. The government wishes to reduce this to 3% of GDP. Suggest two ways of doing this. List the implications of each of your suggestions. 3. Name a tax that a household pays to the government. Also, 
state attacks that a firm pays to the government. Module 4 ends here. Happy listening. You were just listening to this chapter. Subject Coordinator Dr. Jaya Singh Production Assistant Jagbandhu Jana Sound Recordist Batilang Lindo and Vikas Sangwan Artists Anandana Kapoor and Akash Ahuja Produced by Vimlesh Chaudhary And presented by CIET NCERT New Delhi, India <laughs>